Yeah, Trifa doesn't sound happy. That's why I'm confused about Trifa. Oh, she still did not figure that out. Okay, so we actually do have Reinhardt coming back. That's the one thing I wonder. Quite a change of the tone from Reinhardt to Shiro. How did Trifa get her up here? Shiro was very optimistic about his right arm. If Shiro is scared, then you know this is bad. Hello and welcome, Pocket Watch here, and it's about time for another episode of the S era. So, we're continuing the story, and apparently, Reinhardt is coming back somehow for some reason. Maybe he's not coming back actually, and just like playing with us. Maybe he's just like here to just give us a taste of terror or something. Who knows? And apparently, I still have quite a lot before the end, so I'm not going to tell you this time that hey, maybe we'll finish the. Uh, wrote in this episode because I have a feeling like we are not going to end the episode like on the end of the road so yeah anyway let us go to the episode let's see what's going to happen this time because it's getting kind of crazy so yeah I'm basically unable to predict the outcome at this point well if Reinhardt is coming back then the only outcome is that we lose and the world is doomed but who knows let's go Uh, the well divine vessel however Kay could not have not have foreseen what her rash actions would cause she would not have known what uh, would happen if the priest had been liberated from the divine vessel so it's actually the case that i mentioned in the previous episode that reinhardt can come back if trifa is basically dead so if we don't touch Trifa, if we somehow manage to make his plan to go to waste and also not kill him, then we are saved, basically. We just need to like trap him somewhere. The problem is they have lifespan of like 100 to 300 years, so after 100 years or so Reinhardt would come back because Trifa so would die by like itself. I think we need to deal with Trifa anyway, uh, I mean with Reinhardt anyway. But maybe in a hundred years we can do something about that. What do you mean, run away? Who? Lee, swiftly and immediately. The seven swastika had opened. Only one remained. In the moment, I was satisfied. Within the dark depths of uh, his recording conscious receding consciousness, Trifa could make out the voice of the Lord. Oh shit! So we have actually half face of Reinhardt here. I could use that as a thumbnail actually. I just need to like mirror screen this. He had come to claim his vessel. No, no. With this, all was lost. Yeah, Trifa doesn't sound happy to be part of the Legion. Yeah. <laughs> Trifa so departed the Divine Vessel yeah, with an ear-piercing shriek. And that was not all. God in darkness, okay. An aberration manifested above the altar swallowing the statue of the Virgin Mary and so it shed tears of blood and the cross that appears to have rusted in crimson the golden cross withered, throbbed and ultimately came alive what the actual fuck is happening? wait, how, many, how long do I record? 5 minutes ok, I can swear, I think YouTube will not ban this I think it's fine maybe 
the beast, the devil, born of a million uh, blood pacts, forged of an alloy of steel and bones and the flesh of man. He was the very embodiment of war. And so, the densely concentrated physical form of hell itself descended upon the mortal realm. Gold that shunned all light, save to for the beguiling luster of its own self dispelling, dispelling the night of the mortal realm of its radiance. Nigero. Nigero des... Huh. So he's talking to her that she should flee. That's why I'm confused about Trifa, like... You want to murder people and then you want to save them, like, what the actual fuck? And also, I don't know, like, do I feel sorry for you or not? Like... Ah... It's confusing, but I like it. Also, my camera is a bit... I think it should be like that. Probably. Kay realized uh, she could no longer recognize the priest's face. The raging golden chaos seems to have per uh, perverted it. The frame of the man remained tall and delicate, but his cheeks had grown thinner, his eyes had retracted and grown hollow, his face turned into the mask of the liberated old man. A mere shadow of what once was man, unable to be, uh, bear the horror of his sins as he drowned himself with madness. Hollow. Old man. Huh. So Reinhardt is not coming back to his body actually? Was that the soul of the Valera Trifa? But then why did it look nothing like the divine vessel to whom did this impregnable body belong? Oh, she still did not figure that out. Right. Okay. Well, it seems like he truly believes that Sakurai, like, feels about Sakurai as his daughter. Because he's basically dying here, so we can assume that he's telling the truth now, so these are like his actual feelings, right? So, same like with Rea. He cares actually about Rea. That's why I'm so confused about like Tripa, what to think about him. Maybe no one tried. I mean, okay, the, okay, you all tried. Yeah, okay. True. Sorry, that was stupid. It's like, obviously, everyone from them tried to fight this guy. Also, Trifa, you are lying here? Because in, like, two episodes earlier, I believe, you said that Machina Fizz can defeat Reinhardt. You are lying. You are lying! Oh shit, he's actually crumbling. Oh! <laughs> okay, so we actually do have Reinhardt coming back. Well, we are dead. How can he come back at 7? Doesn't they need 8? I swear he's just fucking with us. He can like come back whenever he wants, I swear. 
The life of the beast filled the chapel as the priest's soul vanished to the depths of the golden chaos. The monarch of destruction towered before Kay in all of his uh, grandeur, the strongest and the vilest of souls that had ever, ever graced the cosmos. I, Yume, Kibo, Shinrai, Yuzio, Gishin, Itawari. Actually wielding the lance, huh? Actually wielding the lance. We are so dead. I wonder if, like, is this like actual him? Like, like this is like actually true Reinhardt coming back, or this is just like part of his power because it's still not eight swastikas. I wonder how bad it is. <laughs> Maybe it's not that bad. Maybe it's like, I don't know, like 10% of his power or something. Maybe we can deal with 10%, who knows. Maybe he's not fast enough to... I don't know... Be faster than time being stopped. And I can stop time and just beat him, right? I mean, okay, never mind. Like, Ren cannot like scratch his body. Scrap that. <laughs> His voice boomed like the deep explosion as the Simmering Gold reclaimed his divine vessel. In that moment, Kay understood everything. Yeah. Also, he have like little dagger here. I think I mentioned this before. I wonder if you like ever use it. Probably not, because he have lance. So why would he use that? But yeah. No wonder he she could not destroy it. No wonder it seems invincible. Was a vessel for a legion to dwell in. A divine contraption blessed with a multitude of offensive enchantments designed by the Mercury itself. Oh! So Mercurius enchanted Reinhardt's body? So it's not like Reinhardt's body is, like, was always like invincible. Mercurius made it that way. Is that what she mean? It had been prepared as the cradle to host Reinhardt's heritage soul during his triumph, return to the mortal world. Reatripa could wield the lance only because he had been possessing the body of his true and rightful master. Well, we still don't know. I mean, we know that Reinhardt will come back when Tripa is dying. But we still don't know if Reinhardt can forcefully come back to his body. That's the one thing I wonder. Like, what will happen if Reinhardt decides, hey, you know what, I want to come back. Will, will it just like, you know, just instantly kill Trifa? Like, regardless of the state he's in? I wonder if we will have like, a situation like this. As the rightful own, uh, owner returned to the vessel, the godslayer lance awoke to its true, the supreme and supreme power. Playing would be of the little significance, but the tip of the holy lance could pierce all foes regardless of the rules they had imposed upon the physical realm. Well, we can stop time. Can it, like, avoid that? <laughs> Well, fuck. The blessing of the beast. Kay could no longer escape the horror everlasting slave of everlasting slavery. She merely stood there in an absent-minded stupor, gazing at the golden tip 
of the land that slowly advanced towards her heart. <sighs> so we're actually going to lose Sakurai. Just when I had hopes, like, at some point that maybe she will not die. And so, she begged desperately for someone to save her. Oh. I'm recording this on stream again, by the way. No one on the chat told me that I'm right before the ending. I could add this to the previous episode, I swear. <laughs> Oh, well, it's going to be the new one. I'm not stitching it together because this is the... I, I guess this is just a tradition, right? At this point, this is just a tradition. Fortress for the Jivat end. Okay. A gunshot! Oh, we are starting with Shiro. Okay. Quite a change of the tone, from Reinhardt to Shiro. A gunshot reverberated across the wide hall. It had been launched to neither hurt, nor even intimidate. However, one would have to possess a very special frame of mind not to label the action deranged. Those that knew the man in particular would most likely have been rendered speechless by the sight. <sighs> What? Why are you like under the chapel? How did you get here? Because this place is under chapel, right? And what you cannot hit? There's nothing to hit there. What? Uh... Let me just... I'll just click on chat just in case. Okay. Shiro reloaded his pistol with a self-mocking smile. A simple process. But one he could barely carry out with his shaking fingers. Why he's shaking? I mean, he's not feeling pain, right? Because he's like on medicals. Like, he, like we saw before. Is he actually scared this time? That was the main reason why he couldn't hit his target. Who are you shooting? There's no one to shoot! Everyone's up! There's no one underground. Shiro continued firing while casually humming a song or two. It had only been two days since he lost his dominant arm. Oh, okay, he's like... Not shooting with his right arm, okay. Wait, he, wait, he lost his dominant arm? Did he? I forgot. It's been a while, wait. But with his sense of balance all messed up, he had some serious trouble with precise aiming. To be fair though, to be fair though a normal man wouldn't be able to stand under the circumstances. That's true. Wait, did I miss something? Wait. Is... I think like he cannot use his right arm because of the injuries, right? It's not like he lost arm entirely. Oh no, wait! Okay, I remember. Sorry. Yeah, Schreiber. He hit Schreiber in the face with his arm. Yeah. I remember now. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. True. True. Okay, I... I kind of... Yeah, it's been, it's been a while. At this point... Only divine intervention. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry. At this point, only divine intervention could uh, make the bullets from his desert eagle. Uh, a weapon he had trouble holding steady in his right hand reached the target. Hell, he had already wasted a good 30 rounds with this nonsense. However. Who are you shooting? Or what are you shooting? Are you like practice shooting? Little by little his bullets drew closer to their target. I think he's just like practice shooting before he can go into action. 
Following each miss, Shiro would uh, uh, recalculate his aim and adjust the position of his mangled body accordingly. He wasn't all that keen on the whole thing, but now was not the time to mind the princess. This new approach to shooting might have been only something he came up with on the spot, but he needed to get his aim steady for tonight no matter what. Yeah, so he's just like practice shooting. And finally... Okay, so... So he is in a place with Kasumi, okay. I guess, yeah, she's underground, so I, I've... yeah. That was the true nature of his the deranged actions. Kasumi Ayaso was tied to a 10 meter tall cross in the middle of the hole in the crucifixal position. And Shiro had been trying to shoot off the chains holding her, okay. He might have uh, he had no other options, but these still, these still weren't the actions of the same man. Yeah. Also, how did Tripa get her up here? Uh, like, like, we talked about this like a bit before recording on stream. Like, how did Trifa get her there? And, and also, it's just to be cool, I guess. Like, there's no war reason for this. <laughs> Imagine Trifa being on the ladder or something. The hall was all but deserted, save for them, and Kasumi herself remained unconscious. Which meant there was no one around to stop Shiro from doing things that would otherwise give the likes of Rent Fuji a heart attack. Yeah, basically. You can just like shoot Kasumi at this point. It took him 45 bullets, but he managed to ultimately achieve his goal without killing Kasumi in the process. Success! The girl's body, now freed from uh, most of its shackles, proceeds to slowly slide down to the trunk of the cross. To what? It seems like he got the hang of it. Next bullet hit the rope supporting Kasumi weight, and the girl plummeted down straight into the Hagen Kraus flag Shiro had set in place as a safety net. Even he knew that trying to catch a person falling from a 10 meter height with a single arm was generally not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Yeah, can you explain how you talk in my mind? Like, each hero's mind? Explain stuff? Shiro came closer to obsidian round table, at top of which, clad in the sheets of Nazi flag, Kasumi continued her slumber. He lightly tapped her on the cheek a few times, prompting her to eventually open her eyes. <laughs> Finally! Kasumi is back! Yo, Shiro, Don't play with us. You talked with us. We can talk telepathically now, right? It was none other than uh, she who guided him this way, after all. Yeah! Okay, so she's doing this like... Unconscious unconsciously? Is it like, I don't know, like some kind of blood raging in her or something? Like, I don't know, some kind of being a telepath? That's so weird. It's... What is this? Yeah. Maybe maybe we should not think about this actually. It will give us a headache. It's actually a reference to Under Level. A lengthy explanation would only be a pain in the ass, and Shiro did not feel like overanalyzing the situation. If she did not remember anything, it was probably just his mind playing tricks on him in a drug induct stupor. Not like the truth meant much anyway. Yeah, so I'm going to kidnap you from this place. 
そりゃ言えて妙だなまあ似たようなもんさほら立ちな Smiling, Shiro offered his right hand to Kasumi, who still in smiled over the days, was about to take it when. Well, a lot of stuff happened when you were sleeping. Kind of. Shiro spoke the truth, though he knew the girl would understand, even if he explained everything in detail. And even assuming she did, all that could、uh, would wait him was an hour long sermon on how to behave like the proper man. Understanding the futility of the conversation, she raised his right hand in a mock to this,、uh, to this play of surrender. Kasumi was about to say something, but Sam、uh, seems to swallow her words in the last minute, and instead proceeds to bandage her left,、uh, left shoulder with a piece of cloth she tore off her uniform. <laughs> <laughs> Shiro was very optimistic about his right arm. <laughs> I, I think like, he believes to be a lizard. Yeah. <laughs> Firing a heavy gun like his desert eagle caused the stitching in Shiro's left shoulder to tear, making it bleed again. Kasumi made sure to put some force into her bandaging to show him she was serious, but Shiro simply answered her with a smile. I am on shit ton of like anti pain drugs, so no. <laughs> It was the truth. His body had long since lost the ability to feel pain. Sam went for his sense of smell and taste. Sam went for his sense of smell and taste. It likely wouldn't be long until his eyes and ears gave out too. Then his brain would turn to mush. A massive pain for sure. But pretty convenient in its own way. If a good night rest couldn't fix him up, he might as well live what little life he had left to the fullest. Or steal the secret of immortality from one of those cycles. Ooh, he seems to have already missed the boat on that one. Hmm. I mean, about immortality, if you think about this, if Reinhardt just like decides, like, hey, do you know, I like your balls, like, you are pretty cool, you know, so I will make you like a n h e r a r so yeah, like here, take my spear, like he's just like throwing spear at Shiro, killing Shiro, and just like putting part of his soul inside Shiro, and Shiro becomes like LDO a n h e r a r that's like shoot guns. <laughs> like, he would be like a n h e r a r who couldn't, who cannot like feel pain. Like, what the hell? Uh. If she needed someone to embrace, she should have picked Ren. Unless that would have resulted in an alternating quarrel to leave the Shiro spirit. But as she was about to completely lose himself. But as he was about to completely lose himself in thought. Okay, so this is the part where Reinhardt is back, I guess? Nani? Kasumi raised her head as she felt Shiro muscles suddenly tense up. Next moment, however, the young man's hands grasped the back of her head and suddenly pushed her face into, into his chest. Ooh. First of all, only Shiro can, he can feel Reinhardt's presence. Kasumi cannot, so yeah. And second thing, he actually got scared. Shiro got scared. That tells a lot. <laughs> And he instinctively tries to protect Kasumi of like whatever is happening. If Shiro is scared, then you know this is bad. いきなり何すんのよ
And close your eyes while you're at it. The words had been at the tip of his tongue, but Shiro decided to swallow them. Instead of focusing all attention on the area directly behind him. <laughs> behind him? It didn't take long for Kasumi to also sense the abnormality in the air, or rather, she was allowed to sense it. Shiro. Her normal laid back childhood friend, whose easygoing attitude endured even in the harshest of situations, was now trembling her like a leaf. She couldn't believe it, but being squeezed so tight in his embrace, she possessed no means to dismiss it as the momentary error of her senses, when his heart was beating like drum. Okay, this is. So, yeah, ma. So, so, I'm not going to do it. Ah. He did not expect to run into a thing like that. He could feel. Something. Why do you not put the word here? What? Rise up from the very bottom of his heart, feeling his entire being. Wait, what? Why did they. What is supposed to be here? Rise up from the very bottom of his heart, filling his entire being. What's this here supposed to be? Like fear? Like you want to like not tell us that he like we know he feels fear at this point, so I don't know. Why would they like obscure this word? I don't get this. There's like no reason. He had a guess or two though. He stood at the edge of the obscene round table, in between the seats, labeled sex and ribbon. In other words, the seat right in front of him was... Right then. Oh, it's Mercurius! Oh shit, he's scared of Mercurius, not Reinhardt. Oh. And yeah, Mercurius, like, whole body is basically back. Like, what? The actual fuck. Okay. <laughs> like, the when we had just like Samuel and Schreiber, like we had just Samuel, I said like we have zero chance. We are in negatives now. Like negative hundred percent of winning this bank. Kasumi took a grasp and began sh shivering all over, though not from the overwhelming pressure, nor the aura of Mal is hanging heavy in the air, but on the other hand. Mercurius seems like he's not going to murder everyone, he's more like observer. So we should be afraid of Reinhardt probably, like sure Mercurius is probably insanely strong just like Reinhardt. But he's not like, I guess violent, you'd say. After all, he showed no reaction when the obsidian clad shade first appeared. The thing that uh, surprised both her and Shiro was something else entirely. A sensation that could only be described as the foreknowledge. Again with the foreknowledge, huh? Let me also check really fast. E Everything is actually working correctly because I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, it is working. Okay. After all, Koryamata, nan no jiodan da. Sonna, uso da yo. His voice, his presence, his mannerism. No shita no kana, ojo-san. Yeah, like I said before, like, you look pretty much like Ren, but with like long hair. I said it like two episodes ago. 
Yeah, they look the same, like twins. The man sitting in the seat labeled Drain Scene was the mirror image of certain someone they knew better than anyone else. Kasumi addressed the Enigma in a trembling voice, encountering a ghost or a demon would have likely affected her less than, the, than this man. He had his voice. He had. Oh, he had. His, he had, he had, he had, he had the same voice! I thought they sounded similar, but this is actually the same voice? That's even more crazy. Even like. Tripa and Reinhardt didn't have the same voice. That was crazy. In the same air about him, yet what lured behind those eyes seems nothing like the man she knew. Yeah. And behind the sweet and gentle, in a sense, even meek disposition of the man like. Okay, how do you call yourself nowadays then? If you abandoned your Karl Kraft Mercurius name? Because he left the, the LDO basically, right? In the backstory we had when he was like talking with Reinhardt that he will seal him in the castle for him to wait for like something. And uh, that was when he said like he's like going to leave the LDO and become the observer, right? Something like that. So that's when he cast away the name Mercurius, I guess. So how do you not call yourself? Outside of this, I wonder. A nature most callous. He paid them no more need, heed than he would a piece of furniture. At the very least, that was Kasumi's first impression of him. Okay, so this is metaphorical. Because Ren is his substitute, so in a sense, he can call him a son, just like Trifa is calling Rea and uh, Sakurai his daughters. This is metaphorical. For a second, I thought, like, actually, actually, but. No. A terrifying sensation of despair and repulsion took hold of Kasumi heart. Okay. Nemo Nemoente Mortem I couldn't read that. Someone in the comments helped me with this. Like, can you tell me what's, what that means? Whatever this chapter was called. Highly appreciate it.